this session we are going to discuss when we have square root as a numbers as coefficient of x square or as a constant this is a special case method remember method is going to remain same the steps are not going to change right but maybe we are having different cases previous we had all whole numbers now we have square roots so how to deal with it deal with it so first of all imagine there is no square root only so what you would be doing root 3x square this is a number other than 1 right so and here constant so what do we do in that case we multiply the coefficient of x square with constant so don't skip that first step do it even if you have little doubt don't skip it do it so root 3 multiply by 4 root 3 can you tell me the answer of this one what will be the answer root 3 multiply by 4 root 3 you have learned this in grade 9 search indices how to solve it so the answer will be 12 over here can you guess how the answer of this root 3 multiply by 4 root 3 is 12 think how the fact I used over here is that if you multiply root 3 with root 3 that will give you as 3 whole number right remember so I've used this multiplication fact so root 3 into root 3 that will give you 3 and 4 is already there so 4 3 is a 12 done done with the first one okay easy the first step is done now let's follow the normal steps now we'll factorize what 12 factors of 12 so factors of 12 1 into 12 2 into 6 then which is the another one 3 into 4 right so these are the factors of 12 now what shall we do are we going to add or are we going to subtract we are going to do what add because the sign of constant is positive so let's add it that will give you 12 plus 1 as 13 then 6 plus 2 as 8 and 4 plus 3 as 7 so which factor I am going to select see the middle term it is 8 forget this sign for a while and only see the value which is 8 6 plus 2 8 and 2 6 are 12 done so my factor is factors are 2 and 6 but what about the sign I should be getting the sum as minus 8 and product as 12 product should be positive 12 and sum should be negative 8 so how how can we think about the signs right so let's say let's start with this 6 and 2 if I take minus 6 and minus 2 that will give me minus 8 simple right so minus 8 is done now think about the positive 12 what I need to do for that I need to multiply minus 6 multiply by minus 2 that will give me 12 minus minus plus so what are my factors my factors are minus 6 and minus 2 so I can write factors are minus 6 comma minus 2 done so these steps are same as we have done in previous case so let's get the factors now for this one I will be writing as now see root 3 x square so how do we write this first term without the power so what is over here root 3 and x what is the first factor minus 6 then I will be writing first term without the power 2 which is root 3 x what is the second factor minus 2 is equal to 0 why because I want to find zeros of the polynomial so I will be equating each of them 0 1 by 1 so let's do it let me take this as 0 so that is root 3 x minus 6 is equal to 0 so root 3 x is equal to minus 6 will become positive 6 and x is equal to 6 over root 3 let's stop here for a while and get the another solution another solution is root 3 x minus 2 I will be taking as 0 this 2 will become positive so 
root 3 x is equal to 2. So, x is equal to 2 over root 3. Now, we need to think of the cancellation. Can we do any kind of cancellation? Now, you must be thinking as we have root 3, how can we think like that? Okay. So, let's start with the how we started sum. Root 3 into root 3 will give you 3. So, I'm thinking in a reverse manner. Can I write 3 is equal to root 3 multiplied by root 3? I'm thinking in a reverse way, not only in a forward way. So, here 2 and 3, we cannot do anything. So, that's I'm going to stop there, which is my solution or 0. Now, for this one, can I write x is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 over root 3? How have I have factorized 6? Factors of 6 are 2 into 3. Done? So, now let's do further. So, x is equal to 2 into 3 upon root 3. Here I am now. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to do reverse way. 3 I have it, but what will I replace with root 3 multiply by root 3? So, 2 as it is. Then instead of 3, I will be writing root 3 multiply by root 3 and denominator will be as it is. So, root 3 root 3 by root 3 root 3 will get cancel, cancel and cancel. So, what's left in numerator? You can see denominator will be 1 and denominator will be 1. So, numerator 2 into root 3. So, this is my another 0. Remember this simplification, right? So, this is how we are solving when we have cases with square root. Now, represent, let's represent that polynomial on graph paper. How will it look like? So, this is the curve will look like, right? And it is going to touch x axis at how many points? Two points. We have two values. What are those two points? 2 root 3 and 2 over root 3. Now, out of that, which value is bigger? Think 2 root 3 or 2 over root 3. Obviously, 2 into root 3 because 2 is here in multiplication and here it is in division, right? So, this value is bigger one. So, I will be taking the, num the point which is near to 0 as 2 over root 3. This is 2 over root 3 and this point as 2 root 3. So, this graph, if I project on, code, on graph paper, it will be touching x-axis at two points. What are those two points? x is equal to 2 root 3 and x is equal to 2 over root 3. Remember one thing, this graph is not necessary to draw in exam. This is for the purpose of understanding that what is the meaning of these two values of x. So, this is how we solve the sums related to square root. We'll do another problem as well. So, let's discuss another case with square root. In previous case, square root was on the first term and constant term. But in this case, square root is in the middle term. So, how to do it? Here we need to think something different because whatever product you should get is 6 and whatever sum you should get should be 3 root 2. So, here we need to think something differently. Guess what shall we do? First step is going to remain same or is it also going to change? Now, see one good thing about this question is uh, coefficient of x square is only 1. It's not any other number other than 1 which is 2, 3. Previous case we had square root of 3. Okay. So, how shall we proceed? We have 6 as a common and it is positive. We will factorize 6. Then we will think that uh, we need to add the factors. Okay. So, how shall we do it? Let's think. How shall we do it? 3 root 3 and 6. So, what I suggest for this kind of questions, when you have square root in middle term, remember the case. In previous case, square root was in the first and last term, not in the middle one. Okay. So, let's start. How shall we proceed? First of all, let's take your constant. What is the constant? Which is 6, right? Clear with the constant. Only take the value. Don't take the num. Do, don't take the sign. Now, 3 root 3. Now, which number is in square root? Which number is in square root? So, it is 3, right? The number in the square root is 3. Remember this very carefully. Divide that number with 6. So, 6 divide by 3. That will give you 2, right? 
I am repeating the steps one more time. First of all, take your constant as it is and whatever number is in the square root divide with the constant. So constant is 6 and number in the square root is 3. So 6 divided by 3 answer is 2. Done. This is the first unique step you need to do that we have not done in any of the cases that we have discussed so far. Right. So 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. Done. Now how shall we proceed? Now we need to factorize. We will factorize only number 2. We will not factorize number 6. Okay. So factors of 6, factors of 2, they are very easy. Only one factor. Right. Factors of 2 which is 1 multiply by 2. 1 2 is a 2. Done. Now check the sign of the constant which is positive. Okay. So let's do it. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Right. Now you must be thinking that if we add we are getting 3 but when we look at the middle term it is 3 root 3. Remember why I will not bother about root 3 because I have already divided indirectly. Okay. So I will be only looking at the first whole number which is 3 not root 3. Right. So my factors are 1 into 2, 2 and 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Now let's get this root 3 back into the channel. So how shall we do? I will be adding root 3 in all terms. So 1 and root 3 then multiply by 2 I will be writing as root 3 done. So what shall I get? 1 in 1 2 is a 2 and in previous sum we learned that root 3 multiply by root 3 will give you 3 right so 3 into 6 2 into 3 that will be 6 now let's add root 3 over here so 1 then root 3 plus 2 i will add root 3 so Consider this as x only. 1x plus 2x. How many x? 3x. So that is 3 root 3. See, are you getting the constant is 6 and the middle term is 3 root 3. Right? So these are my two factors. If there is a different sign, then what are what are we going to do? We are think about the signs as well as we discussed in the previous sums. So what are my two factors? Root 3 multiply by 2 root 3. If I multiply, I will be getting 6 and root 3 plus 2 root 3. If I add them, I will be getting 3 root 3. That's my middle term, right? Let's repeat this step one more time because these are very unique steps that we have not discussed so far. So this is my equation x squared plus 3 root 3x plus 6. So the speciality of this sum is square root is in the middle, not at the first term or at the constant term. So First of all, I will be taking constant as it is. Then I will be dividing with the number in square root. If it is 2 over here, I will be dividing with 2. If it is 3, I will be dividing with 3. So 6 divided by 3 will give you 2. Then I will be factorizing 2. Factors of 2 are very easy as 2 is a prime number. 1 multiplied by 2 is equal to 2. And what is the sign of constant? Plus so I will be adding 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Done. Now you must be thinking that we want root 3. So let's add root 3 in all of them. 1 root 3 multiplied by 2 root 3. So 1 into 2, 2 and root 3 multiplied by root 3 will give you complete number as or whole number as 3. So 2 3 is a 6. If you add it root 3 plus 2 root 3 like x plus 2x that will give you 3x in this case 3 root 3 so what are my factors let me write my factors my factors are root 3 and 2 root 3 think about the signs they both are positive all signs are positive so it will be positive now let's write the solution x square I told you as it is a x square what we were doing in previous case we don't write the power only x we write so x 
then what is the first factor root 3 if there is no sign we consider it as what positive so plus root 3 then first term as it is without the power so x 2 root 3 no sign means positive 2 root 3 is equal to 0 so either first factor will be 0 or second factor will be 0 so let's do it equate to 0 let's take this is equal to 0 so x plus root 3 is equal to 0 root 3 will be shifted over here so positive will become negative so x is equal to minus root 3 is my first 0 let's get the second one I will be taking this factor as 0 so x plus 2 root 3 is equal to 0 I will be shifting it so it will become negative x is equal to minus 2 root 3 is my second 0 right so my both zeros in this case are negative minus root 3 and minus 2 root 3 so if I draw the graph for x square plus 3 root 3x plus 6 it will be looking something like this and see where this curve touches x axis both at both points are on left hand side of the zero means they are negative and my zeros are also negative minus root 3 and minus 2 root 3 and what we need to do we are remember one thing that we are doing just for the purpose of understanding that what is the meaning of these two values right so if i put on the graph paper x is equal to minus root 3 and x is equal to minus 2 root 3 which will be bigger out of this think it's easy because root 3 root 3 is repeating this is two times so this number will be bigger if i see only value not the sign so this will be minus root 3 and this will be minus 2 root 3 so this is how we find the zeros of polynomial when we have square root in the middle term so so far we have discussed the method of finding zeros of polynomial with degree of polynomial as 2 or quadratic polynomial